Bonjour. Obviously, I changed my hair. Um, it's supposed to have more wave in it, but unfortunately, it doesn't. So it's kind of looking either Victoria Beckham or Look for a Quad. So I'll let you decide for that. So I've seen Giovanna uh, do a duping video of the new Kaleidos uh, Flower Punk palette and actually I really like the idea. And I've also seen, I'm so sorry, I really don't know how to pronounce that name because um, I'm not native and then if I don't hear it, I'm like... <laughs> Madelaide? Anyway, I'll link uh, them there as well. Um, do some duping videos. Actually, I really like the idea. I thought, oh, actually, I could do that. That could be fun. So uh, today, what I thought uh, we could do is dupe the Flower Punk palette from Kaleidos, uh, similarly to what Giovanna did. The reason why I decided I could do that is, first of all, I thought it would be fun, but it's also like, I feel like a lot of the colors in this palette I already own. It. I'm on a low buy currently. I'm trying to see like when I see a palette, do I really need this or maybe do I really own the colors? And I usually don't really grab for the like different palettes to do makeup. So uh, usually you don't really realize that you already own some of the colors, maybe the entire color story, but it's just like because it's not combined together, you don't really see it. So I thought we could do that today and see if I can do the Flower Punk palette. Before we get started, if this is your first time here, hi, my name is Armand. I love cruelty-free makeup, skincare, and also buying new palettes, but also using up the palettes I already own and be creative with them. Uh, so <laughs> if you're into any of these different uh, hobbies, topics, I don't know what you call them, then consider subscribing. I would love to have you here. And yeah, let's get started. So this is the Flower Punk palette, if you haven't seen this yet. So I think it's a really beautiful color story. I think it's it's really stunning. It has like that, obviously flower side, but also that punk side. Now there are some dual chromes in this palette. So uh, I think it's better to like see swatches to see actually what the dual chrome is like. So this is what the swatches look like on her fair skin. Um, I think I'm also gonna insert some um, like swatches on a deeper skin tone so you can kind of like have an idea. But what I have here is a collection of palettes, quite few actually, that I think potentially have shades that are gonna be good matches for this palette. Now, just a heads up, I a lot of the swatches are inspired from the Instagram because um, they posted videos comparing some of their palettes shades with the ones from Flower Punk. This made the whole process a lot easier for me to find like very similar shades. So not a lot of the credit to me, a lot to Kaleidos for posting these videos, but you know. The first shade is called Earthship and it's a, described as a cool muddy forest green matte. So I think I've got a very, very close dupe uh, for this uh, green shade and that's from the Kaleidos Futurism 1 Sci-Fi Green which Hobbs obviously has very similar shades, you know, this grungy green tone. We, we have two greens here, we've got one that is a bit more, I think they describe it as like having almost a toffee olive undertone, while this one is a bit more green forest, I'd say. So I think this shade is probably gonna be a better choice, which is called Smog. There you go. I really suck at swatches. I I basically never learned how to do them. So the next shade is called Sun Gazer, and it's described as a brilliant golden metallic with a subtle green glare. And I mean, again, I'm gonna grab my Futurism One Sci-Fi Green palette from Kaleidos. I mean, isn't this literally that shade? I think it kind of is. I think this is a beautiful shade though. I love that shade. Ooh, stunning. The next shade is called Golden Age and describe, is described as a deep mustard yellow matte with a hint of olive. Now they did make a comparison with this mustard shade and they don't look 
quite the same. They're both mustard, but this one is a lot more yellow turmeric mustard, which I am obsessed with this mustard. It's probably one of my favorite, it's not my favorite mustard in my collection. But I do have a shade, which is extremely similar. I think I've got seriously one of the most perfect shade to do that. I think I've got like, I, I saw the color literally for of that palette, and that's the It's Freaking Bats palette by Shred Cosmetics, which is the collab with Beauty Bean. Beautiful, beautiful palette, and I'm really obsessed with this colors. But I mean, doesn't this cream like mustard with like a chartreuse undertone or like an olive undertone? I feel like this one is probably a bit more. Like the flower punk one is probably more of a mustard with an olive undertone. This is more of a olive with a mustard undertone. <laughs> and that shade is called Trapper. Yeah, I guess it shows a lot more green. But that's what that's why I find the the palette a bit deceptive is I find the swatches to be quite different from like the colours in the pan. And I know the Collider's shade can tend to do that a bit, like the formula tends to, it doesn't look exactly the same on the eye, which is not my favorite thing. But I mean, again, we, we're getting that vibe, you know. Um, it feels almost kind of in between the next shade, which is like the a true chartreuse almost. And the one I'm duping right now with like the mustard. But I think it's stunning, and I'm not really seeing anything in my collection that would actually fit because a lot of the mustard I own are quite mustardy, as opposed to like having a lot of olive undertone. The next shade is called Chlorophyll or Chlorophyll, because in English there's absolutely no freaking rules when it comes to Y's and I's on whether you pronounce them I or E. You just have to freaking guess, and it's always wrong, so I'm giving up. <laughs> Anyway, it's described as a leafy chartreuse golden green matte with a sunny glow. I don't know what they mean by sunny glow. Is it the color? Is it like a satin kind of formula? It doesn't look satin on the photo, so I think it's just the undertone. I do have a shade that's very close, and it's probably one of the oldest palettes I own, and unfortunately it is from a company. I, I really love that palette, but it's from a, a company I don't support anymore, haven't in like years, but I still own it because I don't want to throw it away and I almost never, I, I never show it on like my YouTube or Instagram but it is the Alien palette from Jeffree Star Cosmetics and honestly I love this palette because it's a beautiful kind of, it's beautifully cool tones and there's like neutrals and there's colorful and I love the color stories. Anyway, we've got like a true neon chartreuse which I think kind of, it looks a bit similar. It's not quite the same undertone, but I think we can get the same vibe using that shade. So the shade is called Abduction. Yeah, I think it's quite, because it's kind of a pastel-ish color. Oh, I do get pigment of it. It's a bit transparent, obviously, so I have to go back into it and kind of do multiple swatches to get what I want. Like the green, color story, like the green grungy side of the palette. I think it's pretty much nailed down with this. So I'm happy with that. We're again getting into these like waters that I find are a bit difficult to dupe in my opinion, um, because I'm not sure I really own, I don't really own any pink palette. So, but we're gonna try. We're gonna try. So the next shade is called Peach Soju. It's a muted pink matte with a shot of peach. Beautiful color. I love I love colors with like a peach undertone. I'm not I'm not really into warm tones in general, but when there's like a peach undertone, I'm like, mm hmm I love that. I've got I think if I mix two shades, I can get something that's fairly close. And this shade's up from the Creepy Q palette. The shade I was kind of thinking of is strawberry milk with this, which is like um kind of obviously strawberry pink pastel color. But it obviously has a lot more of that powder pink undertone, if that makes sense. So it's not quite the same. We do have third eye, which is like a peach pastel. I think if we kind of mix them, we can get something new. There's kind of that vibe. Let's see if we can do that. Let's swatch strawberry milk. Actually, on my skin, 
I think it doesn't look far off at all, but I'm gonna dig in a tiny bit of third eye, which is the peach we have. I'm just gonna go over it and see. Ooh. But this, isn't this perfect? This is like pretty much a perfect dupe. Next shade is called Nouveau. <laughs> Can we do like a like a slow motion shot or something like? <laughs> anyway, describe as a warm, dusty, berry brown mat. Um, oddly enough, it's a brown, so it should be fairly easy to dupe. But I find the undertone and color. It's not that easy. I'm I'm not sure I have really a dupe for it, but we're gonna we're gonna try. You know, I I selected quite a few palettes that had like these kind of red-ish, purple-ish undertone to uh, browns. Unfortunately, because it's more of a dusty brown, it's usually kind of more uh, mid-tone or as dark. And usually, when you get these kind of chocolate brown, they're a lot deeper. I know they made comparison with the Futurism 7 Sashimi City because there's two brands in there. But it's definitely, I feel like the photo is a little more of a like, it's a berry but like a cool one. And this is a bit more of like a red, like a warm red shade. Uh, the other one is definitely not that color. It's more like neutral, uh, like neutral warm. So I don't think that's gonna work. Another shade I thought of is You Not Marry All That, which is that chocolate brown, which is a bit more cool, reddish undertone uh, from the Pure and Raw Beauty Christie collab. Beautiful palette. If it looks a lot deeper, so I'm not quite sure. Palette I haven't touched yet, which is terrible, is uh, the Divinity palette from Shroud Cosmetics. And we have uh, Freya, it's just like a berry aubergine-ish color. Again, more saturated, is a bit, a bit deeper. I think I might swatch it though, because it does look like a, a pretty decent match, I think. But let's swatch it on my hand. Mm, I think it's pretty close. That might be my pick. Anyway, I, I'm gonna show the other option just for comparison. I have the colliders. A skate pod palette and there's like a slightly like warm brown reddish brown uh, called Terrace let's watch it so that's Freya from Shroud and this is uh, Terrace from the escape pod by colliders I feel like this is a bit more it's like more deep and a bit more brown uh, so I think I'm gonna go with Freya Not too far off, if you ask me. I think that's pretty close. Now let's move on to the next shade. I think we're getting like to the, probably the most difficult ones to dupe. We've got two duochromes. The first one is stained glass, which is a translucent, translucent fuchsia shimmer with rose and violet sparkles. I got something that's extremely similar actually from Kaleidos again. Actually, I have two I like to play with. Amaretto from the Escape Pot palette, which is that kind of pink. A slightly more warm tone, I think. So it has it is a bit more warm tone, but it's a duochrome. I don't know if you can see the shift very well. Has kind of like a violet fuchsia shift. The other one I have is Pink Ginger from the Sashimi City Futurism 7 palette from Kaleidos. Now, this is definitely a duochrome. It has like um, both a pink, and kind of golden yellow um, shift. It looked very similar on videos, I think, because they, they did compare it. Uh, but it definitely has that kind of fuchsia shift, I would say. Oh, it doesn't have as much fuchsia as I remember it had. Yeah, it looks a lot more golden, weird enough. Anyway, I don't know if you can see that very well. Actually, I think in the end that the uh, one from the SK pod is a bit dupe. I was thinking I would use that one, but this looks a lot more fuchsia, just like the photo does. The only thing is it looks a bit more peachy, warm tone. What the, on the photo, it looks a bit more like, um, it looks a bit more like a blue tone base fuchsia, if that makes sense, kind of slightly going into violet. Okay, let's watch this baby called Amaretto. Ooh. 
we're getting into these like beautiful like minty turquoise teal greens. I think they're stunning. The next color is Alo Cove, a tranquil turquoise sparkling duochrome with a lime gold shift. I've seen again videos and I've seen a color that looks exactly the same. Except for one thing, it, because the, the, the color Aloco from the Flower Punk palette has like a... Is it a multichrome if it has more than one shift? I'm not sure. It has like a double shift. So it has like, it has a turquoise base. It has a kind of a green, like lime green reflect. But then if you change the angle of the swatch, it becomes like a fuchsia pink. And it's quite mind blowing. So I don't have that color because I mean, I don't have, I actually don't have that many dual chrome. I'm kind of, I think mean, most dual chromes I have are from Kaleidos actually. But looking at the Kaleidos 5 Electro Turquoise palette, we've got a really, really beautiful dual chrome. It doesn't look like it's going to be a dupe at all. But it has the most beautiful like green shift, which I didn't realize until I digged into it. I was genuinely mind blown how beautiful it is. I, I didn't realize how that beautiful shift. Anyway, I need to stop talking to swatch, but. And I guess that it has more of that green reflect on the swatch photo. And I was in the pan, it looks more like that lime green color. The final color is Mint Fever, a potent elixir of matte aquamarine and mint. So I do have like a turquoise color here in the electro turquoise. Unfortunately, I it's not quite the same undertone. This is more of like a mean blue. So I think what would be a fairly good dupe might be Cripit Real from again the Creepy Cube palette by Shroud. It's that kind of greenish pastel. So let me swatch it so we can have a look. Yeah, I think it's a bit more of a um, blue mint as opposed to green. Another color I thought of for this one is from my, from Sugar Pill and it's the color Mochi, which I would say the Sugar Pill one has a bit more of a transparent base. It's a bit more of a pastel. Now let's see if I can, if I mix a little bit of Tekka Hint, which is that green. It's not too bad, is it? I'm kind of getting that same kind of aquamarine vibe and voila that's my <laughs> flower punk dupe using palettes i own i think i did a very good job looking at the pictures i mean they are they are very close i think um hopefully i can get kind of similar but yeah i think this looks like a <laughs> like a pretty damn good dupe if i if i'm i think i did a decent job especially for the first time I probably picked a very easy palette to do, to be honest, because it seems like I had a lot of similarities. Let's move on to try and create a look from these different colors. Um, I think I'm gonna start, like I'm gonna do one full eye on one side and then uh, do the other one, just to make it easier to edit. I'm gonna prime my eyes with the Urban Decay Primer Potion in Eden. I'm gonna start with Abduction from the uh, Island palette. I'm just gonna, Focusing it on this outside because I'm gonna use other colors. Now from Shroud, I'm gonna dip into Cripit Rill and had a little bit of Tekka Hint on a Delium Tools 783, which is like a fluffy crease brush. So dipping in quite a bit here, a little bit here. The, the color story is beautiful and quite contrasting. But I'm not sure if you can create like a lot of look. I feel like you can have like, you have three different color stories that are quite like complementary. But I'm not sure you can easily create looks with them. Let's try and blend them together. I'm gonna go back with my E25. I'm gonna try and merge them together and see. Let's go into the It's Freaking Bats palette, but shroud with Butte Bin. I'm gonna dip, dig into Trapper, which is that beautiful chartreuse with a mustard like situation. And I'm gonna use that to kind of, with my E25, I'm gonna use that to kind of dip and up my crease on both sides. Let me go back with my other Darium Tools brush and 
you know, remind the color it belongs here too. Now let's go into the Kaleidos Futurism 1 sci-fi green and we're gonna dig into... Is it smog? I'm gonna go with like a Sigma E42, which is that firm blending brush. I'm, I'm kind of dipping up here, you know, gonna create my slight V situation. Trust the process, trust the process. Trust that looks stunning. I'm gonna dip into that color. I'm not sure if I can get them to blend because it's such different, like, on the tone, but I don't know. I'm gonna pick up some glitter primer and then I'm gonna kind of, I guess, carve like my lid. I always glitter primer with, um, especially with like these dual chromes because they've got quite a transparent base and I'm not, they feel almost like a topper. I'm not a big fan of that. So I prefer having more like of that. Beautiful dual chrome moment. Yes. Now let's dig into Tron from the Electro Turquoise palette by Kaleidos. Ah, oh, this is such a beautiful color. I feel like, I don't know if you can tell it on camera, but I'm getting a lot more of that green reflect here. Oh, this is so beautiful. I love that color. I think I was right to trust the process. Now I'm gonna go into uh, my other palette from Kaleidos, the sci-fi green, and we're gonna take, I didn't say the name of the shades, I'm terrible. Glanora, which is the like green, I think this color just merges so beautifully into the rest of the green. Now let's see if I can merge these together. That might be a bit more difficult. That's beautiful. I'm gonna dig back into the Electro Turquoise palette and take a little bit more of that shimmer and kind of like place it here. It's just to kind of help them blend together. And I'm just gonna kind of alternate on each side of my brush to kind of blend them together. Um, I'm gonna go back into a bit more smog, which is like the, that deep toffee green, and just kind of help blend things together. Just smudge uh, along here and just like, just to help the transition between matte and shimmer to a bit better. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repeat that on the other eye and do my face makeup and then I'll come back for the lower lash, li 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 lower lash line and yeah, we'll just kind of wrap up and stuff and yeah, finish the look together. Does that make sense? Anyway, I'll see you in a bit. Hi, welcome back. So. I've done my, obviously my foundation face and I sculpted it uh, with uh, some bronzer from the Flower uh, Beauty Sculpt Palette in light medium. And now we're gonna finish up the eyes. So for the lower lash line, I think I'm gonna use the pinks because I haven't used them yet. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna connect that, but we're gonna try. So that's what we're gonna do. So let me grab my Creepy Cute palette again. And we're gonna dip into Strawberry Milk and just add a tiny bit of third eye to kind of get that pinky shade we had. And we're gonna blend that on the low, lower lash line. I'm really gonna build up that color. So I keep digging back in and keep building. Cool, now that I look like I caught some kind of eye infection, we're gonna add some depth. I'm gonna go into the Divinity palette from Straub and we're gonna grab Freya. I'm gonna smudge that along my lower lash line. I'm gonna kind of connect it up there. So taking more product and going and kind of define this how it would be. Going back with my blending brush and just going over it. Bring this color together, it's just so contrasting, but so pretty. I'm gonna grab some Freya onto my blending brush. I'm gonna kind of carve my, <laughs> under my eyeball, if that makes sense. Finally, what we're gonna do is grab like a little smudge brush and I'm gonna grab my Escape Pod palette and we're gonna grab 
amaretto, which is the sparkly um, fish yarn. I'm just gonna kind of smudge that on my inner lash line kind of situation. Let me just repeat that on the other eye. Uh, that'll be like two seconds, I think, just if I do that. Now, what I would really like to do is do some blush draping, which is something I kind of like say experimenting with. I was inspired by uh, Madelaide. It's basically when you kind of fade your eye, like you're blending here, into like a blush of that similar color. I think what I'm gonna do is actually use literally the color that we've created together, which is like the pink as a blush. I really like using strawberry milk as a blush. I think actually with that color, it's just gonna be stunning. So just take a bit of both. I'm just gonna kind of take it right here and kind of blend them together. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, the eyeshadow is kind of fading into the blush. I quite like that. Actually, I feel like it would be quite appropriate for this look. I like, I really like this blush. I think it's very stunning. What I'd like to do now is pick up another blush because I'd like to have a bit of dimension. So I'm going to grab my Milani Coral Cove uh, blush. I'm going to use that to kind of go onto the kind of more the cheekbones to kind of accentuate them a bit. Now let's grab some highlighter. So I'm going to, because I'm use, I'm going to use a bit more of a sparkly highlighter. I like laying down a base first. So I'm going to, with like a more neutral metallic one. So I'm going to grab again my Flower Beauty Sculpting Palette. I'm going to grab the highlighter here. Grabbing just a tiny bit of it, just to kind of give a bit of a glow. Now I'm going to grab one of my Space H highlighters from Kaleidos. Uh, this one is Star Surfer, which is like, it's, it's a very kind of, it's actually one of the most neutral highlighters they have. It's kind of a pink. And now for a little in a corner highlight moment, I'm gonna take the highlighter. Now let's spray some setting spray. Now let's pick a lipstick together and I'm not sure what I'm gonna use. So I know there were like some lip products in the collection, uh, but I don't really own any of the kind of shade that was suggested. Uh, there was like a colorful set that was like with a teal, like a fuchsia and a deep uh, true brown. And um, there was another set with like nudes. And I'm not really feeling a nude with this, you know what? So I picked out two lipsticks we could use today. I've got this color, which is like a right base brown. It's very pretty, it's quite deep on me. And I've got something quite colorful, which I think would be very pretty to in that cider from Black Moon Cosmetics, which is like a mustard. But it has a very strong olive undertone. I think I'm kind of feeling the brown because there was a brown in the connection. Shall we do that? I think I might do that. Let me line my lips with a new truffle from NYX. And now let's put on Crucifix from KVD Beauty. I'm gonna put on some mascara and like pencil and things and I'll join you again to like discuss. All right, that's the look complete. I'm really glad I went with that lipstick because I feel like it's really giving that 90s grunge vibe. I think it, it just looks very nice. The colors are kind of all over the place, but I quite like that because it's quite colorful and I don't know, it just feels a lot like what the collection was kind of giving, you know, so I think it works very well. What did you think? Did you enjoy this? I really, really enjoy kind of duping and going through my collection. I think that was loads of fun looking for the exact shade and stuff. So I'll definitely be doing that again. Let me know what you think about this look, about this video in the comments. If you want to support my channel, you can give this video a like, you can leave a comment. Any engagement helps me in the algorithm get more visibility on YouTube. So that's always appreciated. If you don't know what uh, comments to leave, you can just leave this flower emoji as a way of engaging. I'll see you very, very soon. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.